The plains of Africa represent one of the last great bastions of megafaunal life. Here, large lumbering beasts still roam, accompanied by herds of smaller grazing hoofstock. Of course, the environment's not complete without its iconic predators. Lions, leopards, cheetahs, wild dogs, and of course, the subject of today's video, the hyena. Hyenas are a group of mammalian carnivores prominent throughout Africa and Asia. At times scavengers and others hunters, they remain a key part of the environments in which they live. The history of the hyena, however, shows that this animal has been part of many more different environments and has had many different unique forms. So today, let's take a look at the evolution of this creature. First off, let's talk about the placement of the hyenas in the mammalian family tree. Hyenas belong to Carnivora, a clade containing various carnivorous mammals characterized by the presence of carnassial teeth. Carnivora is made up of two branches, Caniformia and Filiformia. Hyenas belong to the latter group, which may come as a surprise to some given their very dog-like appearance that would fit in well with members of Caniformia, such as, well, dogs. Regardless, hyenas are in that other branch, which also contains mammals such as cats. In particular, they're sister to the line Herpestidae, which includes mongooses and their close relatives. The family Hyenidae is where all extant hyenas can be found. This group evolved during the early Miocene. One of the first hyenas in the fossil record is Protictotherium, appearing 16 million years ago. The genus was present in both Asia and Europe, with many specimens being found in Turkey. This animal is very similar in size and shape to carnivorans such as the civet, measuring in at 50 centimeters at the shoulder and weighing up to 18 pounds. Similar to civets, this hyena was also partly arboreal and had claws that were semi-retractable. During its time, Protictotherium shared its environment with many larger and more deadly predators. Being able to escape to the trees in times like these was a huge boon. Despite the many differences we see in terms of behavior and appearance, Protictotherium had one lifestyle change that's very similar to today's hyenas. That was the act of scavenging corpses. In places such as Badalone, Spain, they were attracted to natural traps that contained various different animals with which they could feed on. Following Protictotherium was Playa Viverops, which evolved around 11 million years ago and was prominent throughout southern Europe. This was a fox-sized genus of hyena with a similarly fox-like skull, though it retained the civet-like body plan from earlier members. However, this genus lost its retractable claws and was a much more terrestrially adapted predator, with stronger teeth and more puncture-crushing cusps. Following these earlier members came an important split in hyena evolution. This involves the divergence of two subgroups. The first of these is the jackal-like hyenas. Some of these jackal-like hyenas include Ictotherium, which was present from the Middle Miocene to the Early Pliocene. This 1.2 meter long creature was theorized to have exhibited pack-like behavior. Additionally, this creature was likely also omnivorous, feeding on plant matter from time to time. There are some other very similar types of hyenas such as Hyenotherium and Thalassictes that alongside Ictotherium all made up the subfamily Ictotherinae. These genera all likely maintained a similar body plan and size, that is, relatively small with shorter legs. Now let's talk about the second group, which can also be broken into two subgroups. The first are the dog-like hyenas, also called the running or cursorial hyenas. Let's call them the cursorial hyenas moving forward because that makes me sound a lot smarter. One of the earliest members of this group was Lysaena, which evolved during the Miocene and lived in Africa and Europe. This genus had far longer legs than its predecessors, which allowed them to chase their prey faster over longer distances. The species also showcased a more carnivorous diet, feeding on larger prey. The Pliocene Chasmoporthetes made even more developments upon this body plan, and despite being called a dog-like hyena, it showed some interestingly feline traits. For example, its limbs were long and flexible like the legs of a cheetah, and it also had sharp cat-like teeth. In Europe, these adaptations actually made it a direct competitor of the giant cheetah, as the two animals occupied a similar niche. Sister to the dog-like hyenas is our next group, the bone-crushing hyenas. There's a small branch in this group that divides the three modern species that fall under here. The first contains the striped hyena, hyena hyena, as well as the brown hyena. But let's take a look at that second branch. Starting off, we've got Pachycrocuta, the giant hyena. Weighing in at up to 240 pounds, this lion-sized hyena was the largest in history. With thick set limbs and slightly shorter distal bones, this animal in life wouldn't have likely chased down its prey like modern species such as the spotted hyena do. What these legs, in addition to powerful jaws were actually good for, were moving and handling large prey stolen from other predators. In the Pleistocene, these animals could have included big cats, the Machairodonts, close relatives of the saber-toothed cats. The spotted hyena is the only extant member of this lineage. Though smaller than Pachycrocuta, it's still the largest hyena alive today, weighing up to 200 pounds. 
As mentioned before, in addition to scavenging, this species can also hunt down larger prey. These animals are also especially sociable. These animals are also especially. These animals are all. I, I don't. I don't know why it's so hard to say this. Hold up. Let me try again. These animals are also especially sociable, forming long-lasting and close-knit groups where they can work together to tackle prey from larger predators such as lions. The cave hyena was a subspecies of the spotted hyena, which inhabited Eurasia during the Ice Age. It lived a similar lifestyle to its African counterpart, where it oftentimes fed on horses present in the area. Now, if you're a real hyena fan, you might have noticed the omission of one particular modern species from this video. That's right, I'm talking about the Ardwolf, the absolute goat of this group of animals. Now, note I didn't call it a hyena because there's a lot of controversy. Now, I think it's a hyena personally because I just group hyenas, you know, you know, the morphology, how it looks like this. A lot of people, they're a little pretentious, you know, kind of Reddit type people. You know, people, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, listen, all right? It's a hyena. Look at this thing. It is a hyena, dude. Let's just get over ourselves for a second. Oh, but it's not actually it's called a hyena. Okay. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. It's a hyena. So we're going to call it. I'm, I'm sorry. I saw a thread the other day and I was just getting so heated. I know I'm just going on. Let me just continue. Unlike the other hyenas alive today, this species is insectivorous, feeding on things such as termites. This diet, when put next to the carnivorous and scavenging lifestyles of species like the striped hyena and the spotted hyena, as well as the omnivorous diets of extinct hyenas like ichthytherium, really puts into perspective how diverse the group really is. Alright, so another thing real quick, uh, I came across this picture of a cute baby aardwolf, so I'm gonna share it with you guys. Alright, moving on. Recent studies indicate that the aardwolf may have been the most basal branch of hyenas, but where exactly it fits within hyena day is still murky. Some studies place it just outside the jackal-like hyenas of Ictotherinae, which makes sense given its radically different dietary preferences. However, other researchers argue that the aardwolf may have descended from a line closer to cursorial hyenas like Lysaena. If that's really the case, then it makes sense why the aardwolf would be its only surviving member. The spread of dogs throughout Eurasia and Africa likely led to the other dog-like hyenas to be outcompeted. However, aardwolves, with their own insectivorous niche, would have far less to worry about. The hyenas had one interesting history that mirrors a lot of its carnivorous counterparts. From humble origins as weasel-sized creatures, they've since spread across the globe, and while their range is not as wide as it was historically, they still remain an important part of the ecosystems that they live in. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like and make sure to subscribe and comment and do all that good stuff. It really helps support the channel. I mentioned in a recent post that we had 80,000 subscribers. Now this is a big milestone for the channel, so I want to thank all of you guys for all the help you've been giving me. I hope we can get even higher and higher in the future. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.